chicken and spit out the bones. What does that really mean? Hey, this is the man from Modesto, and I'm here to download some knowledge on y'all. Listen up. The Bible says, a little leaven leavens the whole loaf. You can't eat the bread and spit out the leaven. Listen, there is a type of a logical fallacy called an awkward analogy, or a bad analogy, or an inapropos analogy, right? When the analogy doesn't really fit. It may be a suspicious argument, it looks like it might work, but if you really think about it, it doesn't. It's misapplied. Look, you can eat an actual chicken and spit out the bones. Hey, no brainer, don't swallow a thigh bone, my friend. But listen, when someone starts coming out and preaching some garbage word with you, listen, the devil knows he can't come to you preaching 100% iniquity. Hey, let's go out and, you know, and then just list a line of sins and that's his whole sermon, people walk out of there in droves. Only the strict perverts would stay around for it. Eat the chicken and spit out the bones is about, hey, listen, we know there's a little bit of heretical kind of, you know, or borderline, just blatant lies kind of stuff in our teaching. But just, you know, you can push that out. Listen, when you start hearing that phrase, eat the chicken and spit out the bones, let understand that you're in a group where they have corruption. Listen, the liars, they understand. When we start lying to them and they go elsewhere with the lies, people are going to say, well, that's not right. So what they do is they front load you. Let me tell you, the Mormons, when they go out on their two-year expeditions to recruit people into apostasy, they are told, listen, when you get to the door, don't tell them about the Book of Mormon. Certainly never tell them that, listen, if you're a Mormon, I bet you never heard this, this is how Joseph Smith, he took a black hat, he put these golden plates in there that only three people ever attested to having seen ever before the angel Moroni took them back. He used to put the golden plates in a black hat and he had a rock, he put the rock in the hat and then he put his face over the hat and he would dictate to a woman who then wrote down and that's where the Book of Mormon came from. You say, what, is that right? Yeah, my friend, but what do they tell the Mormons? Don't tell them about, just tell them about Jesus and the Bible, right? They front load them. Hey, watch out, don't get into the apostasy. Wait until they're fully integrated into our community. Wait until we have culturally changed their lifestyle. Wait until they have business contracts with other Mormons. Wait until they have friendships, people who come to their house and fellowship weekly, monthly. Wait until they're deeply into a Bible study and they have friends that they're sharing their lives and dreams with. Then we'll bring them into the Book of Mormon. This is a stock, this is a yeah. stock demonic teaching. Come in doing and saying all the right things until you have an established base of trust. And only then do you, by increments, start leading the sheep astray. The Satanists go out, they have designs and plans on how to destroy churches, how to take over the leadership of churches and destroy. People, if you're just starting to see a little bit of apostasy, you need to be alarmed immediately. You need to start praying immediately that the pastor be woke to the truth and that he get out of that because he's taking you, he's taking your neighbors down the road to hell. even a scripture that says, listen, when the Antichrist comes, don't even go out to hear him. For some reason, God doesn't even want you to hear that. Well, I'll just beg and choose, I'll spit out the bones. Don't go. The same way, the Jehovah's Witnesses, again, a religion started by the Russell family, a satanic bloodline, in order to deceive. John Todd escaped Satanism, got saved, came out and warned. Listen, the Satanists are taking over church systems. They're tricking Christians into cursing themselves. They're writing the hymnals. They're writing the music so that you curse your own self. If you start recognizing, wait a minute, if the tongue is the rudder of the ship of my life, if I'm speaking into my own life, why would I sing these words over my life? Think about it, people. Before I even heard that, I used to hear the words, and I think about the scripture, and I'd say, I'm not singing this song. And everybody in the church is singing, I'm just standing there like, uh oh, no, uh I'm not speaking those. The Jehovah's Witnesses have a Bible that was translated by five liars who did not speak Hebrew, who did not speak Greek, who did not speak Latin. They actually were challenged in court, show me that you can speak some Greek, guys. And the one guy of the five who had actually claimed to have some ability in those languages, like, no, I can't, uh, I can't do that. Like, translate this little sentence, like, I can't. He, the, they didn't have any ability to do that. So people come to them and they've heard, well, the New World Translation is bogus. And people say to the Jehovah's Witness, you know, your Bible is altered. The Jehovah's Witness is front-loaded, my friend. He is preconditioned, 
pre-wired, he is programmed to say to you, yes, that's right, our Bible translates a corruption in yours. We took out the Lord part and put it back to Jehovah. We're good to go. Thank you very much. This, the King James Version on the opening page says, listen, we took Jehovah and tra translated it to capital L-O-R-D, all caps, because some people are thinking. It's not a mystery. The King James Version people know that that is going on. This isn't what they changed. The New World Translation changed actual scripture to bogus scripture in order to match the doctrines of their creator, of the one who created and started this religion. And what he, he didn't believe in a Holy Ghost. He didn't believe in the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, even though that's what the scripture says. If you're a Jehovah's Witness, go get a King James Version and start reading all the scriptures about the Holy Ghost. Because I can tell you, the Holy Ghost lives inside me. I'm a saved man, redeemed by the blood of Christ. I've been baptized. And the Holy Ghost comes into us. The Holy Ghost lives with us. He is my teacher. Jesus is my rabbi. God is my father. That's what the scripture says. That's the truth. I speak it with gladness and excitement. So, what does that have to do with this bones and chicken thing? Because people are coming against false teachers, whole waves, whole waves of false Christianic movement that are bringing in kundalini spirit, that have bogus teachings like grave soaking, stuff that should rightly alarm every Christian who hears about it. But instead, people say, well, and I think it's because they're under the strong delusion, or at least the wisp of it. I think we're just getting into it because we're definitely seeing people who obviously are into a corrupt religious paradigm, but when you confront them, they're like, no, no, brother, you're falsely judging. No, no, brother, listen to me. Pray that if there is any delusion in your life, that it be broken. Father in heaven, if there is any deception over my mind, I pray that you remove it and reveal to me the truth. Open my heart to receive your words and not the words of the enemy. So when people start telling you, hey, just you know, eat the chicken but spit out the bones, they're saying, well, there's some good teachings in there. Mostly there isn't. And listen, to be clear, the groups that are teaching this are this apostate group, which used to be called the New Apostolic Reformation, uh, except they're getting away from this NAR title because there's so much bad press tagged to that name. So now they're calling themselves Independent Network Charismatics. Now they're calling themselves the Emergent Church. Some of these churches have actually changed the name of their church. We're no longer the Toronto Airport Church. We're this other thing. Why? Because they're afraid that a newcomer might Google the name and find all of the warnings that people who've been hurt and damaged and seen their lives destroyed and been warned by the Holy Spirit, get out of her, my people. That's why they're all changing their names and they're just making excuses. This, eat that chicken, but spit out the bones. This is a front-loaded message so that when someone comes and warns them, you're being deceived, they just say, well, I understand there's a little bit of stuff that's a little bit kooky. But there's some good stuff too. There isn't good stuff. You perceive it to be good by way of delusion. Get out of there and find a real fellowship. The Holy Spirit has been warning me many, many times about what's going on behind the scenes at Bethel Reading. I have a video of Bethel Exposed. I've been showing all kinds of things. I've had warnings from years ago that have since been fulfilled. Now, I have to take screenshots of their stuff because they delete it. Oh man, we're being exposed on this one. Maybe it's a little kooky. It could give us some bad press. We might lose some tithers. Boom, pull it down. People, get out of the strange church. All you need is a fellowship. You don't have to go to an actual church. If there is a church building in your neighborhood where people are praising God and it's all righteous, fine. I'm not saying everybody has to have perfect doctrine. I, I'm sure that I don't. I don't know what's wrong with my doctrine, but I'll tell you what, I've had this attitude for 20 years and I've been getting set free from stuff. But you have to go and search the scriptures to show yourself approved. And that's the way you get set free. Don't put the bone even into your mouth because the bone is a false analogy. The real analogy, the one we get from the scriptures, is a little leaven leavens the whole loaf. You don't want to put that bread, touch it to your tongue, don't do that. Run away from the bakery where they're selling that bread. Run away from the place where they're giving you the chicken with the deadly bones. If they're saying, eat the chicken and spit out the bones, just get out of there. This is the man from Modesto reminding you as always to pray 